Hey guys, I'm out with Ms. Guinness, the pity here. Seven years old, going through a program, undoing seven years of bad habits. She is leash reactive, barking, exploding, lunging, uh, when she sees other dogs on the walk, and also when she sees other dogs outside of her house from the window. She's got a pretty strong prey drive, and she has a pretty strong intensity about her when it comes to a lot of things, including playing tug, playing with other dogs, playing with toys. And so the key to keep her successful is to recognize that intensity, know how to take it down a couple notches, know how to recognize it from the start, so you can stop it from getting from zero to 100 and keep her nice and calm. See how she's just real soft, she's chill, her ears are back and relaxed. There's no wrinkled forehead, intense stare, laser focus, loading, loading, loading to explode. So we wanna keep her in this nice calm state. How do we do that? Well, I can use my remote collar. The beautiful thing about this is our dogs are trained so that when they feel that sensation, it snaps them out of whatever they're staring at, focuses them back on us, and they also understand that it means to relax. It also has 100 levels, so no matter how intense the situation is, there is a number to match that level. So I can't tell you what number to use because I don't know how tight it is on her neck. Is it in the same spot that it was last time? How excited is she? It really depends on the situation. That's why I always tell people, look at the dog. Don't look at the remote in your hand, okay? And that's why we like our dial-up feature. If she's laser focused on something, I'm just gonna hit the button and I'm gonna start dialing up while I'm holding it. And then when I get her back to me, I release. It's that perfect Goldilocks number, okay? So what does an average walk look like with, with our dogs? It's usually about 20 minutes long. We always start at the crate. They wait very nicely in the crate while we get all their tools on. They wait to come out. They wait at the threshold. We give them a potty break in the yard before we head out. And then we're in structured heel. No marking, no pulling, no zigzagging, no tension in the leash. And then when we get to a spot that I pick, I will stop, put them in a sit, I will release them for some break time. And that's their time to enjoy. Uh, depending on what level they're at in the program, it might be off leash on the long line. So they'll get probably anywhere from 30 to 50 feet to just go run, sniff, that's a big one. Our dogs love to sniff, play, do whatever they want. And when I decide it's over, maybe five minutes or so, I'm gonna use my recall, get them back to me, and we continue our walk. We might also practice some downstays. Um, I like to do it in challenging situations, maybe on a tree stump or somewhere they haven't done it before. Um, and then you've really just practiced every single command except place. So 15, 20 minute structured walks are awesome. Even if you can just do it once a day, so good for your dog. So try it. Love giving free time on our walks. They earn this. It's their time to sniff. Go do whatever they want to do within reason. Most dogs like to sniff around, go potty. But there's just got to be that clear difference of break time versus working. You're free versus you're in heel. So there's no sniffing in heel. No wandering around in heel, no zigzagging in heel, but on break time, yeah, you can do that. And then when the break time's over, come, heel, recall to heel. See how she knows the difference? Now she's working. She's not gonna go randomly start sniffing in heel. I like how Josh describes it when you're Driving down the highway, you're not just going to start peeing, right? You've got to stop the car, get out, and go to the bathroom. Think of our dogs. When they're in heel, they are in a car going down the highway. They can't just pull over and pee whenever they want. They're working. Sit. Down. And curl.
down stay and walk away. Very good things to practice every single day with your dog. I mean, not every single day, whenever you get a chance. It's challenging for them. Look at this impulse control. She wants to be everywhere else. And if they're, they're not the kind of dog that wants to be everywhere else, they probably want to be right there at you. So have them practice their impulse control, concept of boundaries, self-control every day as much as you can. The more you practice it, the more it gets stronger, it gets better. And then when you take them to challenging situations, it's not so challenging because they've done this so many times. It's patterned, right? Come, good girl. Practice our recall to a sit. That's a good girl. Down. Down. I did click the remote there because she hesitated. I know it's cold. I know the pavement's hard, but you still have to do it. And we're only out here for a few minutes. She's gotta realize this is not negotiable. Down means down. I'm gonna recall her to a moving off leash heel. Come, good girl. So when she gets to me, I'm gonna turn, catch her on the left side, heel say heel and she catches my pace and walks with me heel girl down nice she did not make that same mistake again. She did not test me. She went right down. Very nice. I'm gonna try to get a double down. Down. See how I say down? It produces her chin to go to the ground. This is ultimate disengagement from everything going on around. This is ultimate relaxation, ultimate impulse control. Lots of regulating her mind right here. Down. Good. I'm gonna crouch down. Good girl. Down. Good. Crouching down in front of them like this, it's a huge challenge because for a lot of dogs, for a lot of years, that usually means it's an invite from the human. But I need her to know nothing should get you to break unless I release you. So if her owners want to take her out to dinner, take her to a, a function, I don't want a human crouching down. No, down. She started to pay attention to a car over there. And my message to her is don't worry about that. Lay down. I don't want her worrying about a car turning down the street. Okay, so that's how it works. It's really easy. We make it super easy for you. Disengage and focus on me. Down. Good. Disengage and focus on me. I don't want her worried about anything. I'm worried about it all. Break. Good girl. Good girl. And she knows the difference between the two. Good girl. Now I'm going to try to recall her. I'm going to get behind her and I'm going to recall her. girl anytime she starts sniffing gets off track come I'm gonna call her again tap the remote sit good break someone enjoys her free time we actually use free time as a tool here um, break go ahead and kind of get them out of what we like to call obedience mode because you know sometimes it's so strict here and it's like boarding school basically that they're always in this mode of listening and I like to use freedom especially with a dog like Guinness to kind of get her out of that mode and into more of a mode she might be in with her owners 
and make sure she still listens. So I'm gonna give her a lot of free time right now. They just love to walk around and sniff. She is a dog's dog. She loves her free time. She loves sniffing. She loves exploring. Great thing about the remote collar is I can set a boundary. If she gets too far away, I can just start tapping my tone. If she's eating something I don't want her to, click, 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 click. Nope, good girl. She drops it and that's it, break. And I can break her again. So there's so many things you can do with this e-collar. Break, go ahead. And I encourage her to go, break. She's not in trouble for eating that. I just didn't want her to eat it. And then I encourage her to go again. There's so much deer poop around here, and I don't want them eating that. And so everything with remote collar training is hands off. Click, 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 and she's off. Right? And then I'm going to encourage her to go again. Break! Such an awesome thing. I don't know why dogs like to eat deer poop. It must taste good. They all do it. Go ahead. Go ahead, break. I want her to have confidence to explore, but also listen to me when I need her to. Good girl. Break. Go ahead. Good girl. Checking in with me, that's good. Well, I'm gonna stay up here because I don't feel like walking down this hill. No. Break. Another deer poop. So what's gonna happen is if she keeps eating the deer poop, the level that I'm using, 25, obviously isn't working. So the next time she does it, I'll just go a little bit higher and that'll that should stop it forever. All right, I'm gonna get a little, get, let her get a little further away. I'm gonna recall her and I'm gonna heal her out of here. Good girl. Heel. Now she's working. Good girl. 